Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Olivia and I work in the communications department here at House and I'll be your host for today's webinar on our 2020 trend predictions. So in this session, we'll be looking at House data and home design photos from our platform and insights from other professionals to see what we can expect homeowners to be doing with their homes. If you have any questions or feedback about the webinar, please just reply to the email that sent you the recording or you can contact support at house.com and the team will be able to help you out there. So if you're new to our platform, um, I'm just going to give a little bit of an introduction about what House is um, and what it does for our professional community. So House is the leading platform for home renovation and design. It provides everything that homeowners need to improve their homes from start to finish, online or from a mobile device. So we have an app available as well. And it's a really vibrant community with um, lots of homeowners and professionals alike. And it's an easy way for homeowners to find the right professionals that they need in their area for their home project. Um, but they can also find amazing design inspiration through our photo stream or project advice, product information, like you name it, so that they're able to turn their design ideas into a reality. So it was founded by Adi and Alon, husband and wife team, who were in the midst of their own renovation in 2009. And they really struggled to find the right professionals that they needed and the right advice and even inspiration. Um, so this was where the concept of house was kind of born. And what they were yearning for was this one stop shop where homeowners can sort of find everything that they need for their project. So house now has five very distinct layers um, that are tied together by really smart technology that makes how such an end-to-end -end solution for homeowners and renovation professionals um, and it creates a really integrated experience for all of our users. So we now have a very global community with over 40 million homeowners looking for professionals, 2.5 million active home professionals in our directory and over 20 million images to browse. And our app also has over 500,000 reviews with a five star average. So because of this un sort of paralleled reach, we have very unique insights into how people are designing their homes. And so I'll go into the trends now and explain a little bit about why we think these trends um, will appear in Australian homes this year um, and, and sort of how we expect them to be used um, in Australian design. So the first trend is the unkitchen kitchen and what we mean by this is sort of an untraditional um, or unconventional kitchen that doesn't really follow the norm. Um, so on house, we are seeing homeowners integrate furniture-like elements um, into their home that reflect the rest of the home's more personalised decor. And by doing this, there's more flow between rooms and the kitchen has a connection to other parts of the home. So Anne Ellard of Kitchens by Cathy um, discussed the decorative features of this trend and she said, think metal or timber legs extending out from island bench top upholstered bench seats adjacent to work areas and hanging metal shelves replacing overhead cabinets. Then at the extreme end of um, this trend, we will also see some kitchens disappear entirely into bespoke cabinetry through shiplap or molding and other color choices. So one of the reasons for this could be more open plan living means that any mess um, that you do leave in the kitchen can be seen from dining room or living room. So these uh, designs offer a really simple solution to hiding mess uh, until it can be cleaned essentially. Um, but another reason could be the size of the property. So by hiding away the main features of the kitchen, it doesn't have to function solely as a kitchen and can also have a separate purpose in the home, such as like a dining room or even a spare bedroom. So here are some images that portray the different elements of the trend. So we have in the middle here, the upholstered bench seat, and you can also see this uh, timber leg table, which is actually extending out from an, an island bench in the original image. Um, so that, that space has now become sort of a multifunctional space. So you can have people, you know, prepping the food in the kitchen, as well as other people maybe working from this, um, this table. And then, on the left and the right, you can see these smart uh, storage solutions that are hiding away um, the main functions of the kitchen. 
So the second trend that we'll talk about is the cheeky extras, which is making use of extra meterage, um, particularly at the end of kitchen benches. So homeowners are no longer deciding between another pantry or more bench space if they have extra room. We're seeing homeowners integrate study nooks, banquets, kitchenettes and more. In fact, study nooks increased in searches on house by 26% in 2019 compared to 2018. So we can see the, that these small um, functional spaces are becoming a lot more common. Um, so in smaller properties such as apartments where space is often limited, this is particularly useful as it often substitutes what would usually be considered a room of its own, such as an office or a dining area. And another reason uh, for this tr rising trend could be that homeowners want to create a more casual dining or working environment. So by connecting to a central area of the home, they don't feel so separated. So these are some examples of banquets and study nooks that we've been seeing rise in popularity on house. And we spoke with Ella again about this trend and she said, adding lifestyle focused elements in the kitchen area is helping to create multifunctional spaces. So the third trend we'll cover is the rise of curves and arches, or perhaps for some of you, the sort of resurgence of curves and arches as we have seen this trend in architecture and design before. So curves and arches are sort of coming back on how architects are embracing curves and arches to give the room a really feminine touch. So we're not just seeing these shapes and windows um, sorry, these shapes on windows and doorways like we're more familiar with and like we're used to. Um, curves are being adopted in island bench design, bookshelves, which at the back here is um, actually a staircase, um, and also furniture with really sumptuous materials. So having soft edges instead of harsh lines creates a softness in the room, which can ultimately make us feel more comfortable and relaxed in that space. So I think that this is where the love for curves has come from. So we spoke with um, Rebecca Norton, who's an architect, and she said, innovation in technology allows us to be more adventurous with form. In the hope of a return to crafted high quality builds, architects are looking to use the best trained laborers who can lend themselves to more handcrafted designs. So as some of you will know, curves are are usually more expensive. So if your client has requested architectural curves in their home, it's a good idea to just speak to them about the cost versus um, straight edges as this, just to make sure that it's financially viable for them. So the reign of terrazzo. So I know some of you are probably thinking terrazzo has had its day, but actually what we're seeing on the platform suggests the opposite. The composite material made a lot of appearances at international exhibitions and design fairs last year, um, including Soze, indicating that designers are still exploring new ways to use terrazzo in the homes. Um, so this year, we expect to see terrazzo on more kitchen bench tops and homewares, and manufacturers will be playing with bigger chips and bolder colors. We also did see um, searches for terrazzo increased by 28%. So to us, this indicates that for our user base, they're still very interested in um, the composite material. So these are some examples of how homeowners will be asking for terrazzo in their homes this year. As you can see, um, there are sort of forms of homewares that we expect terrazzo to appear, such as side tables in the image in the middle, um, pencil holders, even clock faces, plant pots, etc. And then on the right here, this bench top is an example of how manufacturers will use a mixture of aggregates and diff uh, to create you know, different colors and different speckles in, in the terrazzo. So the popularity of metal cladding. So this trend seems to be coming about because of issues with combustible materials used as cladding, as well as limitations on insurance premiums for designers and building surveyors. So this is what Rebecca Norton explained to us. The great thing about zinc, copper and corrugated steel is that they're generally more resistant to harsh climates. So that we, um, that we frequently experience in Australia. And they also require very little maintenance compared to wood, stone and other painted services. So if you are working on a client's exterior, this could be a possible option for them. 
these examples here also show the kind of architectural depth that it adds to the exterior. So we are expecting a lot more homeowners will be requesting, requesting these exterior um, sort of raw materials this year. Colour trends. So these are the paint trends that we're expecting for the year. So we did speak with a colour forecaster from Nexus Design, so Sonia Simpendorfer, and we just wanted to find out what paint colours Australians are looking to include in their homes. And she told us beige, stone, soft eucalypt greens and earthy browns will be strong interior colours this year. She went on to explain that hues seen in natural materials such as sisal and jute, the colours of unbleached, undyed wool, untreated clay and stone. The neutral and natural trend comes from strong movement towards finding wellness and calm to balance and manage our hectic lives and increased desire for authenticity as well, as well as a greater connection to the natural world. So this is what these colours are evoking and inspiring for us. Then she did explain as well though that there's solace for those that really love colour. Um, so you can see that here on the right with this kind of peacock blue. Um, so she said another trend will be strong colours that are not clearly primary brights or pastels with added grey or white to remove the edge of the intensity. This is a part of the continuing trend to lives being lived and captured on screen. So these colours photograph really well, she added. Homewares made of biomaterials, this is trend number seven. Um, so with more awareness about sustainability and the harm of single-use plastics and environmental pollution, there has been a rising demand for homewares made from recycled materials. So homewares are being made now from waste such as glass, single-use coffee cups, which I believe this table may have been used from, um, used coffee grounds, drift seaweed and even banana plant fibres. We're also seeing tapware companies creating taps and shower heads that are designed to minimise water consumption. So reflecting that, our research shows that 22% of homeowners find integrating green materials a high priority for them when completing a renovation project. Um, we also did run a separate poll on our platform specifically about using sustainable materials and 43% of respondents said sustainability was extremely important to them. So evidently these priorities will influence the demand for more eco-friendly homewares and materials. So in these examples on the left here, we have a shower tray that has been made from 100% recycled materials. In the middle, uh, this mirror was made from wood offcuts. And then to the right, these light shades um, were made from banana plant fibres, which is what I was explaining before. So some really beautiful designs that you wouldn't initially probably think that have been made from recycled materials, um, which just shows how much our technology has advanced and manufacturing has advanced to be able to create these homewares. The primacy of wellbeing and biophilic design. So like we've mentioned before, there is a bit of a wellness movement to making waves in interiors, and this is evident in biophilic design as well. So the idea of biophilia is to connect with nature, in return reducing stress and providing clarity and enhancing our feeling of well-being in the home. Um, some of the design concepts include lamps that adjust their intensity according to natural circadian rhythms, decor that really integrates plants, soothing palettes and low VOC paints, and architecture designed for wellness. So already we're seeing this pop up as many designers and homeowners introduce natural light from windows and skylights, exterior views and access to nature, and using water sources as fountains, ponds, and even water features that can be seen, heard, and touched within the home. So these are the eight trends that we're kind of expecting to see in Australian home design. Um, based on our research, based on the professionals that we've spoken with and based on most popular search terms and um, most saved photos on hows. Um, please let us know your thoughts on these trends. Um, as I said, you can email ausupport at house.com or simply reply to the email that sent you the recording. We'd love to get your feedback on that. Um, before I wrap up, I did just want to take a minute to introduce you to our Power Package solution, which is an all-inclusive local marketing program that is available to all of our professionals. 
It includes several terrific features that allow you to take full advantage of the house platform going beyond what you would get from a free profile. So most, most importantly, we put your business in front of homeowners who are in those key markets where you want to do business. That includes through our photo stream, professional directory and project match feature. Um, we work with you to build your brand through our enhanced, enhanced professional profile. We build you a website where you can promote and showcase your business and projects and we'll um, you'll work with a single point of contact on your entire program so that we can be as efficient with your time as possible. Many of our pros find the Power Package to be a great strategy for them because it is designed to promote a strong online presence. Since 97% of consumers look for local businesses online, we do want to make it easy for you to use House as your one-stop marketing team, giving prospective clients a really powerful way to get to know you no matter what, when they're planning or researching. Plus, because the website is connected to your house profile, we'll be able to synchronize your new projects, photos and reviews for you. So you'll never have to pay for updates or changes to your website and it's going to remain current. And we'll also purchase the domain name for you or we can use your existing domain name and we'll provide secure hosting with no additional fees or costs. Um, so if you're interested in learning more, you can send an email to ausupport at house.com or send us a message. Um, by replying to the email and I should be able to help you out with that. Um, that's the end of the webinar. Like I said, if you have any feedback about this webinar, please through, do send it through. We love um, to hear your feedback. And likewise, if you have, if there are any other topics that you'd like us um, to run a webinar on that you can suggest, please feel free to submit those as well. Um, thank you again for joining us today and I really look forward to seeing you at our next webinar.